So let me welcome you to today's session. Um, uh, today we are going to be doing financial management. And uh, this is not the first topic. We have some theoretical topics, uh, the first three theoretical topics, which uh, I will be able to organize the notes for you. But uh, based on the calculations, this is our first topic. So um, basically, uh, when we are looking on the uh the the time value for money um sometimes we have to be understanding the concepts of the determination of the future values and the present values of the expected cash flows so sometimes we might be uh, meeting somewhere and um, i ask you what is the time value for money and when i look on the notes which i've already shared on our screen we are seeing that uh, it involves the determination of the future uh, future values, where we normally do compounding, and the present values, where we normally do discounting of the expected cash flows. So when you look on the the compounding, because already the when we are doing the compounding, we are determining the future cash flows. So when you are doing the, the the compounding, we are going to be looking on the the value of money that we have today, but we need to be investing. Um, in the, uh, we are investing today to determine how much can I expect in the near future. When I, when I look on the last semester's uh, exam, I was able to see there was a question for compounding, which was posed there, equivalent to around 10 marks. And I would be able to sort it out to be able to understand how and uh, how the question for compounding should be tackled in an exam. Now, when you look on the, the compounding techniques, already we are saying that um, it is just the determination of the future value of the expected cash flows, and it normally includes two aspects, right? We normally include the future value of lump sum. And this, word we are, uh, this term, we are going to be using it uh, throughout, the, uh, the, uh, throughout the, uh, our syllabus uh, for lump sum and annuities. Those are the, uh, the terms which are basically mostly used in uh, financial management. Now, when you look on the lump sum amount, it means it is just an amount which I'm going to be receiving once. But uh, when you look on the annuity aspect, it means that uh, these are the amounts which I'm expecting to be receiving uh, partial payments on uh, or gradual payments um, uh, based on certain intervals, uh, which we are expecting to uh, to agree upon with the uh, the, the area which I'm doing the investment. Now, when I look on the aspect of the of the uh, the future value of lump sum, since I have to be analyzing that, we are looking on the the lump sum sum. Uh, the lump sum means payment of an annuity only once, either at the beginning or at the end of the period. So the lump sum amount might be received uh, maybe at the beginning of the accounting period or at the end of the period. And that is where I'm saying, sorry. Good. Now, when you look on the, the, it may also include payment of irregular cash flows over a period of time. As we move forward, and I, I think uh, the aspect of uh, irregular cash flows, we are going to be coming up with it when we are doing capital budgeting, uh, whereby I have to be uh, uh, continuously analyzing and looking on what is the irregular cash flows. And I will be able to give an example where I have invested on a certain circle today. And uh, for a certain period, um, the, I keep on depositing some amounts uh, over different periods. Let me say for the first year, I was able to deposit 10,000. So the, the interest which I was able to receive, for instance, is 2,000. Now I continue, or I say the 2,000 should be reinvested, uh, reinvested on my, as, as my capital. So remember my uh, my capital amount now equates to 12,000. So next year I might be receiving 2,500. That is irregular cash flows. In simple terms, we normally talk about the cash flows or some some of amount of money which they don't look similar. But for instance, if I invest on the same sack of 10,000 and I don't add anything to the uh, to the capital amount, then Every year I'm going to be receiving, for instance, 2,000. So the 2,000 which I'm going to be receiving every year, that is what we normally call annuity, several times. 
uh, up to the point of maturity. That is what we discuss about the future value of annuity, but we shall be able to look at it as we move forward. Now, when you look on it, we say we apply the compounding formula when determining the compound stock, the future value of the lump sum. And um, I'm going to be taking you back, I think, to high school, where we used to use this formula much. So when I go to my board, because already we have said we are going to be using the compounding formula when we are going to be determining the compound future value of the lump sum. So when you go to our board here, when you go to our board, you're going to be looking on something looking like this. Right. So um, we, we had some certain formula uh, there before to determine the compounding technique. So in this case, we used to say amount, right, should be equal to the principal. It means the Juangini principal, Mugani. We can use that one, right? Then one plus R, we raise to power N, right? So when we are discussing about, when we come now, because the upper decaman in form three, when we come to the financial management, when we talk about the amount, we normally talk about the future value. When we talk about the principle, we normally talk about the present value. Right? We normally talk about the present value. So every time I'm going to be quoting the, uh, the, the differences, which are, they are going to be existing here. So this one is going to be our future value written like that. Then this one is going to be our present value. That one is going to be our present value. So when in FM concept, my, my formula will be looking like the future value should be equal to the present value. One plus R, we raised power N. You raised power N, right? Whereby the N which we are, we are putting here, we are talking about the number of periods. Number of periods. Right. If you want to invest on a project for 10 years, we are discussing about the number of periods. Right. Now, when I look on the, the aspect of uh, the rate, this one, this is the interest rates, because you cannot be able to invest on a project whereby the interest rate is not determined. That is our interest rate. And then we have the future value, which we have said is our amount. And then we have the principal amount, uh, which is our present value. Now, for example, let me look, give out an example here. An example here, and I say, if an amount, if an amount of Kenya shillings, 200, right? If an amount of 200 is invested today, right? It is invested today. Is invested today at an interest rate at an interest rate is invested today at an interest rate of 10% per annum. Interest rate of 10% per annum at an interest, um, the 10% the, the per annum for a period of five years. For a period of five years. For a period of five years, right? Its future value will be its future value will be, right? The future value will be, so in this case, I just come here and direct my formula, I say, the future value, we normally get it by taking the present values, one plus R, we raise power N. One plus R, we raise power N. So in this case, the present value of mine becomes 200 shillings. The rate given here is 10%. Then we have our N, which we are saying is five years. So to determine my future value, I just say, let me take 200. One plus the rate, which is 0 0.1. I raise to power five. So how much is my future value? How much is my future value? So I just say, let me take 1.1. You normally start by opening the brackets. 1.1, I raise to power five. Then I multiply by 200. Getting 322 shillings. 322 shillings. So I invested 200 shillings uh, five years ago, and today I can be able to get 322, right? But when you look on it, um, based on the aspect of uh, financial management, we normally say, when you look on it, NB here, I can say for NB, one plus R, we raise power N, is also known, 
right, is also known as the future value interest factor. Future value interest factor, right? The future value interest factor. It is normally written as the future value interest factor. The future value interest factor. So that is why we are saying it is also known as the future value interest factor. And this is how you normally write it. And then you put the number of years there. It might be R percent N years. R percent N years. R percent N years. Right? So let us give another e e e example so that you can be able to understand the concept. I say, if an amount of um, example two, if an amount Right, even amount of Kenya shillings. Today we can quote a big amount. Let's talk about 130,000. Even amount of 130,000 is invested today. Right, is invested today at an interest rate, at an interest rate of, and I know this is the challenge in which uh, my students. Um, you might be experiencing. So if an interest rate rise of 10% per annum, at an interest rate of 10% per annum for five years, right? Its future value will be, its future value will be, mina kuja hapa na ambia exam, mina jua vizuri, to get my future value, na chukua present value, then I say my one plus R, I raise power n. I raise power n. So in this case, um, in this case, uh, you can be able to find that uh, I say the future value is equal to the present value one plus r. We raise power n. We raise power n. So in this case, what is my present value? I say my present value equates to one hundred and thirty thousand. What is my uh, my r? We say our rate is ten percent, and then we have our n. Our n, which is five years. Our n is five years. So to determine the future value, I say take the present value, which is 130,000. One plus 0 0.1 raised to power five. Raised to power five, sorry. So take out your calculator. So I just say 1.1, 1, 1 .1. very simple. Just say 1.1, 1 .1. I raised to power five. Then we multiply by 130,000. You are going to be getting Kenya shillings, 209,366. 209, Kume pesa inaiza grow. You can see if you can leave your savings somewhere, right, in a fixed deposit account, how much you can be able to expect after a period of five years, right? Now, let us talk about some terms which I could be able to see an examiner using in previous uh, sitting. And he said, Determine the future value of these investments. Determine the future value of the above investment. Right? Of the above investment. If, right? If the interest rate was earned, the interest rate was earned, semi-annually, if the interest rates was, um, I can see you cannot be able to see here. If the interest rate was earned semi-annually, these are the terms which examiner is using today in your exam. And the biggest question is, what is a semi-annually? It means I'm receiving my interest rate twice in a year. But the rate which is given here is per annum. So it means when I'm doing my calculations, the rate changes. So it will be 10% divided by 2. Because the interest rate that is going to be given in 6 months, it will be 5%. Then when you look on N, N changes also. If it is 5 years, how many periods? And I say it will be 5 times 2. Getting 10 period. Getting 10 period. Getting 10 period. Right? Getting 10 periods. 
So to determine your future value, sometimes when I was two examiner on a manikia two hibi, the future value will be 130,000 times the future value to factor 5%, 10 periods. 10 periods. The 5%, 10 periods. So in this case, so in this scenario, the only way I can be able to do in this case, right? Just say I can be able to sort out my problems by doing this. I say, let me take my 130,000 by multiply by one plus. I can see 0 0.05. Then we raised for 10. 0 0.05, we raised for 10. So in this case, it will be 1.05. 1.05, I raised for 10, right? I raised for 10, then I multiplied by 130,000. Getting Kenya shillings, Kenya shillings, 211, 756. 756. Like in this easy, to pay the pay, idol. We do like to keep on using all of it. If today I'm consuming 300,000, it's not 300,000, if I have a 300,000 somewhere, I cannot be able to uh, to get some challenges and I leave that amount to grow, right? If it is a fixed deposit, deposit account, I will be able to write a letter to the circle to tell them that I have gotten an emergency, which sometimes it might not be important. But we don't want to suffer when you have something somewhere. Uh, but uh, the, the biggest thing that we have to be uh, teaching ourselves is allowing this money to grow somewhere, allow it to grow somewhere uh, so that uh, you can accumulate wealth. I think it is a good way of accumulating wealth. So when you look on the two scenarios here, the first one we got 209, 366, but the second one you are able to get 211, 756. So the biggest question that might arise is, what is the difference which is existing between the two methods? The, the first one we got 209, the second one we were able to get 211,000. And the difference is because of the compounding effect. And you can see it because anytime after the first period, interest is going to be earned on interest, um, the interest is going to be earned on a certain interest again, and the principal amount invested. Because already in the first year, because when you look on the first year, before this principal, uh, this principal generate any interest. The second one has already in uh, it has already uh, accumulated certain interest because already we are being given an interest in six months and then we can reinvest it again. So it means in the first year I might be having one thirty or uh, and 250. Let me talk about 130 and 250. And you can see that is the difference because here about the corner 130,000, 130,000, 130,000. Let me do because we say. When you look on the uh, the uh, compounding techniques, we say we are dealing with the, the future value of a lump sum, which we have already done. And then we normally have the future value of annuity. So let us shift our gears and we look on the future value of annuity. Your future value. Future value of annuity. The future value of annuity. The future value of annuity. So let us go back to our notes and we look on the future value of annuity. And I can see on the aspect of the future value of an annuity here, we are saying annuity refer to the payment of fixed. And that is where I say, if for instance, every year you're going to be getting 10,000, it will be 10,000, nothing changing. So it, it refer to the payment of fixed period amount over a given interval. So the receipts of fixed amounts for a given period. And we, when you look on our example down there, we are saying, if an amount of um, certain amount, let me give, give out uh, good uh, sums, and I do my calculations down there. So when you look on it, uh, based on the formula that uh, we are going to be writing, this one normally at the end includes annuity. Uh, to portray, uh, the A normally defines the annuity, differentiates from the formula uh, for the future value interest factor, which does not annuity at the end. And in that case, it defines a lump sum. So let us go back to the board and write the formulas and we give out examples. So when I look on the examples which we are giving out, I have said, if an amount, 
right? Let me take this as an example. Let me write an example here. An example, and we are saying, right? We are saying, if an amount, if an amount of Kenya shillings, let me talk about 20 shillings. If an amount of 20 shillings, is, a, is, a, is expected at the end of each year over a period of four years. Is expected at the end of each year for a period of four years. For a period of four years, right? At an interest rate of 2% per annum. At an interest rate at an interest rate of 12% per annum, right? We are asking its future value would be, its future value would be, so we have only two ways in which you can be able to sort out this problem. One, one problem here, we can be able to sort it by taking, so we, we can be able to come up with a table here, which is very simple to understand. Because you know, the cash flows, because at the end of each year, to at the end of each period. So in this case, I can just have end of year written there. Let us come up with cash flows. Cash flows written down there, right? Now we have our discount factor. Let me use the, the future value, right? The future value interest factor. The future value interest factor. The rate which we are using at 12%, I think it is 12% per annum. Then what we are determining at the end of the day, we are determining the future value. We are determining the future value. We are determining the future value. So how many years do we have? We say, I have year one. I have here two, I have here three, and then I have here four. The cash flow that we are going to be getting at the, at the end of each year, we have 20 shillings, 20 shillings, 20 shillings, 20 shillings. That means to call it a swelling Missouri. Come a person to want to invest at the end of each year. So, pesa ya kwanza, e pesa ya year one, itaka kwa account for how many years, right? For how many years? So, you come here and you tell me, we are using a formula of 1 plus R with raised to power M. So in this case, because person and deposit at the end of each year, E20 akwanza itaka ku account for three years. So we are taking 1.12 with raised to power 3. The second one will be 1.12 with raised to power 2. Because na deposit at the end, ya kila mwaka, aya, he person ita deposit up itaka. 1.12 itaka for one year. Then here mwisho itakuwa 1.12 you raised for zero, right? Ini liambi yangu ni one. So the future value here, it is 20. The future value there is 20. What about the other one? So when you go to the year three, it will be 1.12. We multiply by 20, get it 22.4, right? Then we have the second one, 1.12, we raise power two. We are getting 1.25. Have I done it? Yes. 1.125, this is 1.12, by the way. This is 1.25. Then we multiply by 20, getting 25.1. Then the first one will be 1.12, we raise power three. Right, getting 1.40. Then I multiply by 20, getting 28.1. So what is my future value? So in this case, it will be 20 plus 22.4 plus 25.1 plus 28.1, getting 95.6. 95.6, 95 this should be five. 95.6. Nine five point six. That is how you're supposed to be. Okay, and the investment you have to require eighty. But at the end of the day, you may put a nine five point six. 
What is another way I can be able to sort my question without using that table now? Right? Now, could you happen to be a B? Could you happen to be a B? And B. The future value interest, uh, the future value interest factor annuity, right? R percent N years. He na ito nini. Na kujia hapa na kwambi na itangwa the future value interest factor the future value interest factor annuity. So how can I be able to get this? We did the formula to get this. So the formula to get this one, we normally take one plus R, you raise to power N minus one, divide by R. Divide by R, right? So let me put it here. I know here there is a, a reflection. So I have said to get this one, let me put it here. It is one plus R raised to power N minus one, divide by R, divide by R, something looking like that. Something looking like that. So in this case, you have to be understanding how can I be able to sort out my problems uh, using this formula. And I can be able to tell you it is an easy job. Since the rate you have it, the number of years you have them, then we can be able to multiply with the principal amount. So in this case, I just say 1 plus 0 0.12 raised to our n, which is four years, right? Minus one. Then you divide by 0 0.12. How much it is? So it will be 1.12, you raise power 4, minus 1. Then you divide by 0 0.12. Getting 4.77. It should be four decimal places, by the way. 7793. 7793, right? Then from there, I can be able to multiply this figure with my principal amount. So I say... 4.7793 times 20. How much is this? So I just take 4.7793 times 20, getting 95. 95.6. 95.6. It's upon you to use the method in Unataka. To me, in Unataka. Right? All the methods are correct. All the methods are correct. Now, from that one, uh, we can be able to say that can I be able to do a question from the past paper to understand the two scenarios, the two scenarios before we, we shift to discounting techniques. And I can say, yes, let us try some questions which were brought like last semester. To Angalie, how can we be able to come up with a solution for such kind of a problem? So there is a question which was brought here the other day, 2022 question 1C from the compounding technique. Right, let us go there. Let us go there. Let's shift our gears to the past paper. I have said December 2022, question 1C. December 2022, we have question 1C. Question number 1C. We have been told there, you are client Alfred Otieno wishes to invest 500,000 shillings for two years with interest compounded, but with the right to withdraw a moment's notice. At a moment's notice, sorry. So the following investment options are available. So option one, we have been told, invest with Nyumba Building Society currently, offering an interest rate of 14% per annum after tax with interest paid half yearly. That is semi-annually. Option two, we have been told, right? Option two, I've been told there, invest with Kijiji Bank Limited at an interest rate of 17% per annum 
with interest paid annually. But option three, we are being told, invest with FIDA Bank Limited, which is offering 16% per annum, interest paid every three months. So required here, we are being told, using suitable computations, advise your client on the best investment option he should consider. We are being given six marks there. And then we are being told, calculate the effective rate of interest for option one. Then number three, we are being told, identify two situations that affect your recommendations in C1 above, right? So the first thing that you need to be doing with those kind of questions, you just need to do the analysis of each option and determine it because we are, we are going to be giving out, because here we are dealing with return, the highest return, the one that you are going to be uh, advising the investor, right? The option with the highest return is the one that you are going to be advising the investor. So let us do our calculation properly. So we said, <clears throat> already we, have, we said here, I know you have your questions. So this is what we said. We said, like what I can see in option one. <clears throat> what is happening with option one? I've been told I'm going to be investing, right? I'm going to be investing uh, with Nyumba Building Society currently offering an interest rate of 14% per annum after tax with interest paid semi-annually uh, semi or half yearly. So in this case, I know if they are talking about half yearly, half yearly, what is going to be affected? There are only two things that is going to be affected. The number of years, the number of years, and also interest, right? So I come here and analyze my interest. Kama kila mwaka napata twice. What is the interest rate? I say, kama napata marambili kwa mwaka. So the interest rate should be divided. So our interest rate is 14%. You divide by two, get 7%. Right? Then the number of years increases. The number of periods increases. So how does it increase? We say the investment is, is done for how many years? We are being told for two years. Right? We are being told for two years. Because already we are being told your client, Alfredo Tieno, wishes to invest 500 for two years. So it will be two years. You multiply by two periods. You remember every year you are getting twice. So getting four periods. So I know a student might be asking, which formula can I be able to use? A is equals to P, one plus R, you raise to power N. Or I can say the future value, which can be determined by taking the present value, one plus R, you raise to power N. So my present value should be equal to Kenya shillings, 500,000. My rate already I know is 7%. And then I know my N is four periods. So let me determine my future period, my future value. So in this case, I just say, to get my future value, I check 500,000. We should be, uh, the 500,000 I multiply by one plus the rate, which is 0 0.07. Then I raise to power four. We raise to power four. How much am I getting here with option one? How much am I getting here with option one? So it will be, I know I have not written the question. The question is December, 2022. It should be question number one C, question one C. That is the question we are tackling tonight. So it will be 1.07 raised to power four. Then we multiply by 500,000. Uh, the amount we are getting here is 655, right? 398. 398. Let us go to option two, because this is option one. Remember that is option one. So let us go to option two. Option two here. And in option two, we are going to be doing our investment yearly. So in this case, it will be the future value is equal to the present value. One plus R you raise power N. The principal amount we know very well today, it is 500,000. One plus the rates. The examiner has told us that the investment in Kijiji, the interest rate is 17%, 0 0.17. And then we raise to two years. 
two years. So it will be 1.17 raised to power two. Then you multiply it by 500,000. We're going to be getting Kenya shillings. Kenya shillings, 684, 684, 450. 450. Then you can shift your gears by looking on option three. Right? Mimi ule exam na pale ame confuse wana funzi kabisa. Ame wambia the investment with Fida Bank Limited, which is offering 16% per annum, interest is paid every three months. So pale mwana funza na juliza, mwaka ikona three months ngapi. Ninakuwa tu ine. Unakuda hapo na niambia, the rate changes. It will be 16%. I divide by four. Because kama ni three. Three, three ya kwanza ya pili. Kama eh, alpha yi ikona two um th uh, two quarters i think it is two quarters right uh every three months and then uh how many quarters do we have in a year we say four so it will be four percent what about n now and it will be two times four getting eight periods eight periods and in this case i say the future value now will be take your five hundred thousand after you determine your rate you plus 0 0.04, you raised for eight. You raised for eight. And you ask yourself, how much money am I going to be getting at the end of the day? How much can I be able to get? And I say 1.04, I raised for eight. Then I multiply by 500,000. Getting 684, 285. Right? 684, 285. 285. So I'll Ukiangaliza option tatu ni gani inatupea the highest return? Right? Ukiangaliza option tatu ni gani inapeana the highest return? I can see it is this one, 284, 650. And I can be able to tell the, uh, the investor like this. Option two is recommended. Option two is recommended since it has the highest it has the highest return the option 2 is recommended since it has the highest return it has the highest return you can see the option 2 then exam na pale nikiangalia um, requirement number 2 exam na confuse wanafunzi kabisa akawaambia namna hii Calculate the effective rate of the interest for option one. So we can get the interest rate for option one now. The already amount you have is six after the period of two years. So you can be able, let me use the simplest uh, way to do the question. I say part two, let us equate. You have the future value. You say the future value is 655,398. We should be equal to the principal amount, 500,000. Right, we have one plus the rate which the examiner is asking, then we raise for two. You raise for two. You just ask yourself, right? You just ask yourself, what is my rate? Divide here by 500,000, right? And then you divide here by 500,000. That one and that one goes. So how much is this? You take 655, 398, divided by 500,000. We are getting 1.311. We should be equal to one plus R, you raise power two. You ask yourself, how an attacker rate? Now already you have power two. Now they told you your power two. Tunasema, use that, right? We can use the root, by the way. Right, so we can remove this with the roots. Right, so here it will be the situi to taita. You need to go ahead and make it. Is it you need to go ahead? Okay, to your power half of here as you may put your effect up. So you're going to go ahead. So this power and that one goes. So how am I going to be getting this? It is very simple. Mini can get a calculator. I'm going to go on a simple can I can I'm like. Kuna simple kana kana mnaini kwa hiyo calculator. 
So I just need to press shift. Shift. Naaka ka button. You're going to be getting something looking like this. So you just need to take two. Then you press shift. Naaka ka button. You get something equivalent to this. Yes, yeah, I can see now you can be able to see something. Two, you can see it will be looking like this. I know it is not much visible, but it is something looking like this. Then you put this figure of yours, 1.311. You're going to be getting 1.145. We should be equal to one plus rates. Two I one pelek on the other side. And you're going to be having 1.145 minus one, right? Minus one. So our rate will be equal to 0 0.145 or 14.5%, 14 14.5%, 14.5%. 14 1.145 minus one, right? You're going to be getting this, or 14.5%. Then to gonna solve your tattoo pali, to me ambi one, nini na is affect easy investment, vitum bini, right? Vitum bini ama tattoo. One, you can look on ni point mingi sana. A student can be able to get that by taking a lot of, but because part three, the examiner when he's asking that, think about the inflation. Inflation, how does it affect the interest rates? Right? The inflation. Think about it. Number two, look the attitude. Attitude of investors. Right, the attitude of the investors. Number three, you can talk about the risk involved. The risk involved among many more, um, many more options you can be able to, or the points you can be able to put there and explain. I know these ones you can be able to explain further if that question was for six months. But we don't need to keep on um, analyzing that much. Because already the biggest part has already been done. The biggest part we have already done. Now, I just want to look on another aspect because already we said when we are dealing with money, we normally, look, we normally do compounding and we do discounting, right? Now, when we look at it, when we were doing our calculation here, we were determining the future values. Now, to kind of like discounting, to find the reverse. To call the future values, to not have to determine the present value. That is the difference between the two. The compounding to determine the future, but the discounting to determine the present. Right? So in this case, let me let me do it straight away. Let me do it right now. Now we understand it to that point. So in this scenario here, we are, discuss we are discussing about discounting techniques. The discounting techniques. And because we have said, the discounting techniques is the determination of the present value. It is the determination. It is the determination of the present value. It is a determination of the present values. And it is normally done, um, it is normally include one, the present value of Blamsom. The present value of Blamsom. Number two, we are discussing about the present value the present value of annuity. Then number three, we discuss about the present value of annuity to infinity. Annuity to infinity. Annuity to infinity. We normally have only three. Only three. So in this case, we, we have to be looking on um, deriving the the formula for the first one, because we, we are going to be starting with the present value of lump sum. So 
So how are we going to be deriving our formula here? Remember we had a formula for compounding. We had certain formula for compounding and uh, we were able to, to look at it in a different way. And we are saying, we said, can you be able to recall, just recall, the formula for compounding we said, take the, the future value, sorry, the future value, which would be taking the present value, one plus R raised for N. But make uh, the present value the subject. You make the present value the subject, and we are going to be saying the future value should be equal to the present value. One plus R raised for N. Divide both sides by one plus R raised for N. Divide here by one plus R raised for N. That and that one goes. So to get the present value, we are going to be taking the future value. You divide by one plus R, you raise for N. Or Miss Penny get to me a formula. Mine to nafanyanga namnae. The future value, right? One plus R, you raise for a negative N. When you do the reciprocal, right? Then the power should have the negative effect. So mina penda to me a e. So meaning to me the present value, na chukua the future value, one plus R raised for a negative n. This is the formula I just to me a sana e. You just to me a sun. You need a formula I just to me a sun. That is the formula that we are going to be using straight away. Now let us look on um, an illustration in these regards. And uh, we are going to be saying, right? Calculate the present value. <coughs> Let me look on illustration here. Right, illustration we are saying, calculate the present value. We calculate the present value, calculate the present value, right? Calculate the present value of 10 million or 10,000. Let me use 10,000 of Kenya shillings, 10,000 expected. How many months or years do I expect here? Expected that after eight years. Expected after eight years. Expected after eight years at an interest rate. At an interest rate. At an interest rate. At an interest rate of 12% per annum. At an interest rate of 12% per annum. Right, twelve percent per annum, right? And the interest, and the interest, and the interest is earned semi-annually. These of your terms, nataka mzoe kabisa semi-annually, right? So when you look at it, this is the determination of the present value. So in this case, when I'm looking on it, I can say to determine the present value, we are going to be taking the future value, one plus R raised for negative N. I can see if we are earning it semi-annually, we said only two things is going to be affected, the rate. So let me analyze my rate. I say it will be 12%. You divide by two, generating 6%. Then we have our N, which we are going to be saying, Eight times two, getting 16 periods. 16 periods. Something looking like that. So how can I be able to get my present value? I say, take your total investment of 10,000, the future value. Then you multiply by one plus, right, 0 0.06. There is for negative 16. How much it is? How much it is? Just take your calculator, right? You tell me 1.06, you raise for a negative 16. You multiply by 10,000. You are going to be getting Kenya shillings. Whom to an accountant eight years ago, he was able to invest 39,36. 3,936. You don't pay invest today. Because in future, at the 10,000. So today I'll invest 3,936. Now, I just I don't have much to discuss about that, but let me soldier on and look on the, the present value of annuity. The present value of annuity. 
right? The present value of annuity. So let me go there. These are basics. And we are going to be using all this knowledge uh, as we move forward. Is the knowledge in Tashina Nikim Bampagatumanese FM. So let us look on number two, where we are discussing about the present value of annuity. Right? The annuity. And when you look on the annuity, we are able to say it is a payment of uh, periodic. It is a payment of periodic. Periodic fixed, right? Fixed amount. It is the payment of a periodic fixed amount um, at, an, at, at a fixed interest rate. So if, for instance, you can be able to check on the, uh, the you can be able to look on illustration here. Let me look on illustration of vanity and I say, e.g., if an amount if an amount of Kenya shillings, if an amount of Kenya shillings, right, let me use how much, 600 shillings, is invested, right, or is expected at the end of each year. Is expected at the end of each year, at the end of each year, right, at the end of each year, at an interest rate, at an interest rate of at an interest rate of 20% at an interest rate of 20% per annum for 4 years for 4 years so the biggest question that you can be able to ask my uh, yourself sorry the biggest question you can ask yourself is present value is present value will be is present value will be so in this case we are going to be looking on the number of years here right and how can i be able to invest so i say here let us discuss the end of year right how many years are we dealing with we are dealing with only four years so one two three and four let us look on our cash flow cash flow invested how much are we investing and we say we are investing 600 600 here, 600, 600, right? And then you ask yourself, what about the discount factor? The discount factor we have said at the rate of 20%. So what is the present value? The present value. Now you know for younger by Vasa Ile Ingini. So you let them bring it to the other three. It will another one because already the enemy invest near one. So it will be 1.20, you raise for a negative one. 1.20, you raised for a negative 2. 1.20, right? You raised for a negative 3. And 1.20, you raised for a negative 4. So how much is this? How much is this? What is the present value interest factor of annuity? So in this case, I say 1.20. I just raised for a negative 1. I'm getting 0 0.8333. Right. What about the second one? 1 1.20, you raise for negative 2. I'm getting 0 0.6944. Because I said four decimal places. The other one will be 0 0.5787. Right? And then the last one will be 1 1.20, you raise for negative 4. We are getting 0 0.4823. So if I take 0 0.4823 times 600, I get 289, 289.38. The other one will be 0 0.5737 times 600, right? I'm getting 344, 344.22. Then the other one will be 0 0.6944, right? Times 600. I'm getting 416. 0.64. Then the first one will be 0 0.8333. It will be triple three times 600. Getting 499. 499.48. So how much is this? 
So plus 416.64 plus 344.22 plus 289.38. Getting 1550.250. 1550.22. Uh, so what is this we are getting? This is normally called the present value interest factor annuity. In other terms, it is normally called the present value interest factor annuity. In the tables and the This is what the examiner normally gives on your tables. Right, the present value of lump sum, which is normally written, and I know I was able to write it. The present value interest factor. This is for lump sum. This is for annuity. That is one for the for the annuity. So how am I going to be getting these on the tables? I can be able to tell you for the fact to get the present value and be here to get for the present value interest factor annuity R percent n years. Right, the present value interest factor. Um, R percent, uh, factor annuity R percent N years. We normally get it by taking any your formula to put up the back of your, uh, the back of your paper, question paper. It's normally one minus one plus R, you raise to a negative N, divide by R. Divide by R. So, but then I find if it is all to my formula, and I anasema, the rate of hours is 20. 1.20. Let me put it in this manner. 1 minus 1.20. We raised for 4. Right? We raised for 4. Then we divide by 0 0.20. We divide by 0 0.20. Right? Then, once we get this one, once we get this one, we multiply with our principal amount. So it will be 1.20. You raised for negative 4. 1 minus my answer, then I divide by 0 0.20. We are going to be getting 2.5887. So in this case, it will be 2.5887 times 600. So how much can we get? So how much can we get? So I multiply by 600, right? It will be... 2.5887 times 600. It will be equivalent to what we got there, but the difference will just be the rounding of errors. So it will be 1553.22. Does not have much, it's just the rounding of errors which have made us to read there. But that does not have any problem. When you use the formula, you're supposed to be getting the similar, the similar uh, values, the similar values. Before we go to the question paper, I just want to go to the present value of annuity to infinity. The present value of annuity to infinity. Or before I go there, I do an illustration. Yes, I can do one. I can just do one. Now, we can be able to do a question they have tested. Right? There is a question they have tested there in April 2022. So look, there is like a question somewhere for April 2022. I think it should be for the first one, the present value of lump sum. Let me check. April 2022. Let's squeeze that on a because because our famous only mingi baka wana time you have set exam. They have just to pick the questions from the past papers. They just speak the question from the past papers. Mm. The time to set new exam it a talk a work. It a talk a work. So it's going to be reading for us. Question two A. Question two A. There someone can read for us.
James Cheke intends to accumulate uh, 100 shillings, uh, 10,000, uh, sorry. A minute, a minute. Uh, in... Continue. James Cheke intends to accumulate uh, 10 million in Kenya shillings in his bank account 15 years from now. Required. The amount he should deposit now, assuming that the bank is offering a 5% interest rate per annum, compounded semi annually. So you can see the examiner has given you a good question there. Right? The examiner has given you a good question there. We are talking about the determination of the present value. So you are saying that the, the, the intent to accumulate a million in his bank, um, bank account 15 years from now. So the amount he should deposit now, the determination of the present value, right? Assuming that the bank is offering a 5% interest rate per annum, this is the question for compounding, but let me do it here. So in this case, um, what am I supposed to be doing? I just say, to be able to get this question, be able to get this question as I was able to tell you earlier because the question is for April 2022. We have said it is question number 2A, right? 2A. And when you look on the determination of the present value again, we say to get to your present value, take the future value 1 plus R raised to power negative N. So the future value of ours. We have 10 million. One plus, what is our rate? Our rate changes now, right? Because already we are being given a rate of how much? The examiner is, given a, is giving us a rate of 5%. So 5% divided by 2, you get 2.5%. What about N? Our N will be 15 years times 2, getting 30 period. So this one will be 0 0.025. You raised for a negative 30. For a negative 30. So what is our present value in Kenya shillings? Our present value in Kenya shillings. So I have a calculator yangu na ichukua pale. So I just say 1.025. I raised for a negative 30. Then we multiply by 10 million. I'm going to be getting Kenya shillings, 4767, 4767, 427. 427. If it's always not to go to my level, so it's not going to be. Who's going to pay the future value? And as I got the sale, you accumulated 15 years, you got 10 million. So you have to take a percentage. I take a 4767, Number three of ours, it will be the present value of annuity to infinity. Minaskia are doing is another they like, right? A lot of people like to invest in bonds, right? We like to invest on, on bonds. And in this case, we are going to be looking on the aspect of infinity. So bonds, they might not be having a maturity period. So that is very crucial when you are making our investment decisions. When you are making our investment decisions, some might not be having our, some might not be having uh, a minute. Good. So some might not be having a maturity period. So that is where we are talking about the present value. Every year I'm going to be getting the interest. So the interest, does it have a maturity period? We say no. It is um, um, the present value all the way to infinity. Now, in this case, we say, right, because um, the infinity means, let me put it here, 
infinity means infinity means infinity will be able to mean payment of cash flow payment of cash flows for unknown period for unknown periods that is the payment of cash flows for unknown period so the present value of annuity to infinity right the present value of annuity to infinity is normally determined is normally determined is normally determined using the formula is normally determined using the formula so which formula are we going to be using remember it we are going to be using the formula the present value interest factor annuity right we have r percent to infinity infinity is not written like this we are going just to be taking one over r one over r one over r right which already um, dictates everything that we have already done. Then also, I'm going to be teaching you how to apply or to use the tables which have already been given there in your question uh, papers. Right? So in this case, let me come up with an illustration here. And then we are not going to be having any problem in this area. I'll come up with an illustration. So I say, let us get our illustration here. Our illustration. Let us get our illustration. So in this case, we are saying, calculate the present value of the following cash flow components. Calculate the present values. The present values of the following, right, of the following cash flow components, of the following cash flow components. So how does they, they, how do they look? We are going to be having the end of year, the end of year there, right, given. Then we have cash flows. We have cash flow there in Kenya shillings, reduced to thousands, right? We have the present value. Let me talk about the discount factor. We can use the rate of 10%. Then we are going to be determining our present value. We are going to be determining our present value. So in this case, we are going to be having one, two to five, right? We have six to nine. We have 10. 11 to 15. Then we have 16 to infinity. 16 to infinity. Right? Then the cash flow, the year one, we are going to be having our initial outlay. Ama, our capital now. 200 in brackets. Then we have 15,000. We have 10,000. 10,000 there. We have 5,000. We have 4,000. Right. And then we have our 6,000. Our 6,000 there. So in this case, we are going to be having a challenge here to differentiate between annuity and lump sum. So we don't listen to Swali Raisi. Right. Is our capital annuity or lump sum for the first year? Is it annuity or lump sum? Annuity lump sum for the first year? Someone, clear first? Lump sum. Lump sum, very good. Because already this amount I'm going to incur them once. This is lump sum. Then from year two to year five, the cash flow that I'm going to be a receiving is 15,000. I can see that is annuity. That is annuity. 
Once you differentiate like that now, you need again to remember the formulas for the lump sum and annuity. And I can be able to say here, because already the determination is the present value. Because in the is the future values. Is only moja moja, it was the kamoja kamoja too. So in this case, to get for annuity, the formula for annuity now, you can get the formula for annuity. We are going to be taking one, one plus R, we raise for a negative N, you divide by R. But for lump sum, we are going to be taking one plus R, raised for a negative N. You raise for a negative N. One plus R, you raised for a negative N. I think now we are together to that point. Let me look on whether the past paper uh, is going to be having uh, the tables which are basically given there. Right? But when you look on it, uh, based on the differentiation of the tables, Ile table we gonna two decimals like zero points. Dio here lump sum. Ile point. Ile table na pate kona for example nine point something. That is the annuity. Kama wezi differentiate pale gomtiani. So the one with the biggest points, that is annuity. The the ni kona zero two points. That is your lump sum, right? So let us solve our problem here so that we can go to the past paper and we do something different. Now for the first year. We have saved the lump sum. So the formula which I'm going to be using, it is this one. So I just need to take 1 plus 0 0.1, you raise for a negative 1. Raise for a negative 1. So how much is this? Right, I just say 1.1, I raise for a negative 1. So I'm going to be getting 0 0.90, 91. So nikiangalia mwanafunzi mwingine mwenye ajui kutumia hiyo table lakini yeye alikimbia kwa ajui kutumia hiyo formula but yeye aliangalia kwa kwa pepa yake hapa tuangalie hapa kwanza yeye alikuja hapa chini hapa ah hii sijui kama iko nayo yes it has the table so ukiangalia table ya hii ya chini yenye na kazi juu imechomeka Right. Ukiangalia table ya chini ndio ya annuity. Si unaona iko na point kubwa kubwa? That is for annuity. But nikiangalia hii ya juu hapa. Ukiangalia table ya juu ndio nilisema ni ya lump sum ndio iko na two point hapo. So kuna mwanafunzi ya juu kutumia formula. Yeye anakuja hapa anaangalia at the left side we are given periods. Pale juu tumepewa nini? Tumepewa percentages. The cost of capital is given there. All the investments. So in this case, I just say one. Then I go row is mpaka mali 20 equal. Ah, 10, sorry. Mali 10 equal. So kiangalia vizuri, although my, our papers is not clear, it will be one and 10. It will be 0 0.9091. I think you have seen it. 0 .9090, 0 .9091. 0 0.9091. It is already also on your table. So kama wo ujui kutumia, you can just be able to use the tables. But me upenda wanafunzi wakitumia the formulas. Because examiner can confuse you. Na akupe vizuri because they like you to fail. Akupe rate ye nyate yuko kwa hiyo tebu. Atakupe vizuri sana. La, la, right? Mark my words. Atakupe rate ye nye yuko kwa tebu. So you need to be doing it using the formula. So in this one, it will be, I just need to place here, 0 0.90. 91 or 9091. I put it there. But what happens to the year two? Year two to year five. Year two to year five. Year two to year five. So what am I going to be doing with it? So year two to year five, it will be very simple. Mean in annuity. Lakini mean appenda kutoka year two to year five. So what am I going to be doing? Na kuja hapa nasema. I'm going to be taking, right, I'm going to be taking the present value interest factor annuity. The rate we have said 10% five years. Then we subtract, because we, we don't need year one and year zero, for instance. Then we subtract the present value interest factor annuity, 10%, but one year. Because it's not going to year two to year five. Year two to year five. So in a manisha mimi, 10 to 5, 
Because year 5 in a cover kutoka year 0 to year 5. To try year 1. At track year 1, you see. So in this case, it will be minus 0 0.9091. Ukiangalia zote za 1. For both table for adjective lambs and they are always the same. As always, but later, zina kuanga the same. So in this case, we are going to just be subtracting this. In your tumepata hapa. But what about this one? I say, let me use my formula and I say, right, my formula will be 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.1 raised for negative 5. Then you divide by 0 0.1. So 1.1, 1.1, I raised for negative, negative 5. 1 minus answer, then we divide by 0 0.1, getting 3 points. 3.7 right 9 0 it ado kienda kwa table utapata ikiwa namna hiyo ukienda hata kwa table utaipata namna hiyo so in this case once, once we subtract how much are we getting so minus 0 0.9091 getting 2.8 2.8 right 817 i think you are getting something like that so here you just subtract 2.8817. 2.8817. Here to memorize on 9. Mwanafunzi mwingine atakuja niambie. Sasa na hii. Pia ni kuambie, calculate for 9 minus 5. Utapata 6 to 9. Because we will take 5 years. We will take year 6 to year 9. What is the discount factor? So I'm going to niambia. Take your present value. Interest factor annuity, nine years, right? 10% nine years, right? Minus the present value interest factor annuity, 10% five years. Sawa, sawa. The, for the five years, Nisha Pata Stag will calculate tena 3.7908. But this one I can be able to calculate by taking one minus, right, 1.1. .1, you raise for a negative 9, you divide by 0 0.1. So it will be 1.1, you raise for a negative 9, 1 minus my answer, then you divide by 0 0.1. You are getting 5.75590. So you can subtract 3.7908. I'm getting 1.9. Six eight nine six eight two. Now put your place up one point nine six eight at eight two. Sorry. Now what about ten? In a journey lump sum straight away. In a journey lump sum. Now put your one sema the one point one. I raised for negative ten. So I put your one sema one point one. I raised for negative ten. Now, pata 0 0.3855. Now, we're going to place up 0 0.3855. 0 0.3855. Now, we're going to hear a What about 11 to 15? Una juta fanya for 15 minus 10. Because una taka 11 to 15. Very simple also. Now, we're going to say the present value interest factor annuity 10%, 15 years. Minus the present value interest factor annuity, right? 10%. And then you are looking for 10 years. So we are 10 years ningapi. And we have an assembly to get here. I need pay pressure. Ni 1 minus 1.1. I raise for a negative 10 divided by 0 0.1. So now we have to create 1.1. I raise for a negative 10. 1 minus answer. Then I divide by 0 0.1. Getting. Are we getting the right thing? 1.1. I raise for negative 10. 1 minus answer, you divide by 0 0.1. I think I'm getting 6. In a part of 6 points, 1, 4, 4, 6. What about for 15 years? You do the same. You say 1.1, .1, you raise for negative 15. 1 minus answer, then you divide by 0 0.1. You are getting 7 points. Six zero six one. So what is the difference? Minus six one six point one four four six. Upon a pata 
1.4615. Right? So when they are mwisho sasa. So to get the last one, the last one, we say to infinity, to get the present value interest factor amity, r percent to infinity, we are going to be taking one over r. So it will be one over 10 percent, which is equivalent to 10. Right? Then this one is subtract 15 years. This one is subtract 15 years. So 15 years you have it here. So it will be 10 minus 7.6061. Ten minus seven point six zero six one, and you are getting two point two point three nine three nine. So what I mean is the amusho to get the present value times six thousand, getting fourteen three sixty three point four. Right. Let us go to the other one. Four thousand times. 1.4615, getting 5846. Uh, the other one would be 0 0.3855 times 5000, getting 1928. Then the other one would be 1.9682, multiplied by 10,000, getting 19682. The other one would be 2.8817 times 15,000. I'm getting 43,000, 43,226, the first one now. 0 0.9091 times 2,000, getting 1818, which is negative now. So what is my present value? Very simple, I say now 43, 226 plus 19682 plus 1928 plus 5846 plus 14363 point 4 minus my answer. I'm getting it at 3000. It's 3227.2. 227.2. Point two or two twenty seven point four. It depends on um, on how you calculate the apple uh, in a chair. apple in a kind of again. Any question at that point? Any questions so far? If we don't have question now. Because already you have the knowledge. 20 May 2018. May 2018 now. May 2018. There is a question there. Question 4D. Tokai period, Jana Meleta is the type of questions. So be careful. Roger to end the parley. Budget 2018. May, May 2018 here. Good. Mawa Limited. Teresia, can you read for us? 
Mawa Limited is in the process of completing the construction of a greenhouse. <clears throat> the finance manager has estimated that the project's use of life is 15 years and shall generate the following cash flows. Yeah, yes, that is uh, one to five. It will generate a uh, five uh, Kenya shilling, five million, six to 10 years, nine million, 11 to 15, four million. The required rate of return of the company is 10% required. The total present value of the project. And you can see the examiner there is giving us 15, not 15, but five months. So already we have been given the cash flow to determine the present values. So this is what you have to be doing. This is what you have to be doing. So you just come here and you tell me, let me copy my years. Right, you copy your cash flows. Our discount factor at which rate the discount factor is given at the rate of 10%. Then you determine your present value. So, the number of years given we have been given one to five, six to ten, ah, yeah, 11 to 15. 11 to 15. So the cash flows provided by the examiner, I'm going to pay in thousands of shillings here, right? So I'm going to pay 5,000. I'm going to pay 9,000. I'm going to pay 4,000. I'm going to pay 4,000. It looks like that. So what would be the discount factor? You can get it to the annuities. The annuities. So I would say to you, Wacha ni chukue five years, ni subtract ya zero. Hakunanga ya zero wata kwa table. So mine enda kwa anuti na angalio ni five years. Because it's one to five. Hakuna ya zero. So in this case, I just say, if I want to use the formula, because you said it is one, one plus R, you raise to power negative N divided by R. So it will be, right, one plus 0 0.1, then we raise to power negative five, divided by 0 0.1. So how much is this? It should be 3 point something. It should be 1.1. I hope you are seeing my board. Right. So 1 minus answer. Then you divide by 0 0.1. We got 3.7908. Let us go to the next one. Now we go to the 6 to 10. We say... Take the present value into its factor, annuity, 10%, 10 years. Minus the present value into its factor, annuity, 10%, 5 years. 5 years, right? Now, this is very simple. Use your formula here. To get this one, I take 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.1. I raise for a negative 10. Then I divide by 0 0.1. So 1.1, I raise for a negative 10. 1 minus answer, then we divide by 0 0.1, getting 6.1446 minus, what about for 5 years? Then I just raise here, to 5 years, to 5 years. So it will be 1.1, you raise for negative 5, 1 minus answer, then we divide by 0 0.1. So 3.7908 is our so much am I getting? 6.1446 minus my answer, and we are getting 2.35. Then we look for the last one. We look the, the present value interest factor annuity 10%, right? 15 years minus the present value interest factor annuity 10% 10 years since I require 11 to 15. And this one I have 6.1446. Then what about for 15 years? What I mean, it will be 15 years. So it will be 1.1. I raise for negative 15. 1 minus answer. Then we divide by 0 0.1. Getting 7.6, 7.6061.
So what is the difference? Uh, minus 6.1446, getting, right, 1.4615. 1 1.4615. 1 1.4615 times 4,000. We are getting 58, 58.46. Then we have 2.3538 times 9,000, getting 21,184. Then the first one will be 3.7908. We multiply by 5,000. We are getting 18,954. So what is the total here at the end of the day? Plus 21, 184, plus 58, 46. We are getting 45,984. 45,984. So that is how we normally do these questions of uh, the present value of an annuity to infinity. The questions are normally done like this. Now, I just request we stop at that point and we keep doing revision. When we meet next time, we are going to be doing, because it's the only thing that is remaining here, I wish I could have done it, but Nimechoka, the loan amortization, the loan amortization schedule is the one that we are going to be doing next time. And then once we finish it, because it's something for 20 minutes, we are going to be starting the valuation concept in finance. The valuation concept in finance, which will be our next topic, a very crucial topic. We can't, uh, we can't afford to miss it. The valuation concept in finance it gives us, um, it gives us a, a, a good background uh, or a good depth about financial management. So it is important to understand it further, and then it borrows a lot of information from the, uh, the time value for money. It borrows a lot of information from there. Then it means that I have to be understanding my, the time value for money if I need also to understand much better the valuation concept in finance, the valuation concept in finance. So I request us, uh, you to allow me to stop at that point, and we can be able to meet next time, unless there is any question. If we don't have any questions,